All right, we're back. 4-5 Radio. And it's another conversation with the Unico. How we doing? Everything good. No, good. nothing to complain about besides the fuckerish and the industry. We're going to get into that for sure. But we start this off by saying, like, these these are my favorite kind of interviews because this is our first time meeting. And a lot of my interviews, like, I meet these people beforehand, so I already heard their story. Like, with you, everything's going to be fresh and brand new. And I don't know, those, those always seem the best ones for me, so I'm really excited for this one. So let's start off with you. Who are you? Where are you from? Well, that's a kind of complicated question because, like, you know, I cannot just tell you who I am in, like, one hour, you know? Mm -hmm. Life is long. You know, right. people say life is short, but I don't believe that because I've been here for 28 years. But, ba like, basic shit, well, I'm Elvin Vicente. I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. Okay. I moved here when I was 16 years old. I'm going to 17 and shit like that. And um, I guess I'm a fucking artist. I make clothes and shit. Well, I don't make clothes. I print on clothes. You know, everybody got that shit twisted. Everybody think they make clothes. They don't. You know, I just get shit and I print on it. And simple shit. I'm just an artist. and just a regular human like everybody else. If somebody shoot me in the face, I fucking die. You feel me? I'm like, just a regular dude. I'm no better than anybody else because I'm a little out here because of my work or anything. So it's just, just a regular dude. Fucking, I live in Bridgeport, Connecticut. I hate it and I love it, which is the perfect balance for me to like do these things that I do. And it's pretty much it, you know, like just a chill dude. So from Puerto Rico, what part of Puerto Rico? Ponce. Ponce, okay. Yeah. Cool. It's like one of the biggest city and one of the fucking worst cities ever. Yeah, I was I actually I've been I went there two years ago. My girlfriend's mom lives out there, so I got to see the pretty much the whole island, like it was yeah, that's it's lit. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's that's lit because, like, I'm from Ponce and shit, but I had a tough childhood. Not tough, but, you know, I was, like, really in the neighborhood and, like, projects and shit. So I really didn't get to see how beautiful my Iceland is, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, then I move over here and I see all these people showing appreciation to Puerto Rico and shit and, like, telling me, you ever been here? And I'm like, oh, no, what the fuck is that? <laughs> Oh, how you don't know? What the fuck is that? Well, I'm in the fucking hood. Like, my mom taking me there. Like, you feel me? But, yeah, it's a beautiful place. For sure. So, how about the art? When, when did that kick in? When did that come into your life? Shit, my mom. Like, as much as I, I would hate to say this, because me and my mom don't have a good relationship. We never did. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, we did when I was a baby, I guess. But as I grew, she was just, like, doing her things, like, that in now and shit like that. And, like, it was kind of tough. But she was a creative fucking woman. Like, she fucking made this ceramics fucking shit. Then she, like, painting and shit. She used to do a lot of angels. So, and she used to paint the face so, like, fire. That, like, I was creeped out to live in my own house. Because, like, every time I was there by myself, I, like, walk to the living room. And, like, I see all these fucking angels looking at me. And you move and shit. And they look like, they're like, uh. So, I was kind of fire, you feel me? When I got older and I wasn't scared of them no more. I was like, damn, I want to make something that, you know, that look like it's looking at you and shit. When you move and shit like that. And, like. She also used to do acrylic nail for people and do shit like Pikachu and fucking, I don't know, like Mad Wild shit, like Mickey Mouse and nails and shit. And if you think about it, that's pretty fucking hard, but she did it. So I used to steal her paintings, her paint and shit, and I used to just like, I don't know, trying to like paint shit, paint on my shoes, like, just, I, I, I liked it, you know, and I was, I was so fucking like depressed as a kid and like so angry because the shit that she used to do and shit. So instead of like in school, instead of like pressing attention and like uh, do whatever the fuck they trying to like make me do and shit, I was not interested on in that. I was just letting all my anger out of my notebooks with like doing like drawings, people killing each other and shit like that. And, and you know, it's well to acknowledge, but I guess that's where it really came from and shit. 
Like my own one side, like, found one of my notebooks, and she's like, "What the fuck is wrong with Albin? Like this kid is like going to kill somebody or some shit. Like this is some evil shit. Like and then every everybody in my family is like, oh, and I'm just, oh, it's just little dramas, it's just little dramas, you know. Like I play it all as a kid, like oh shit, I'm in trouble. But like that's where it really came from and shit. Like my mom and shit. Then it was a mix too with, through like my dad because. He basically like put me on with like clothes, you know. Give me a second. I'm about to take this mask off, but like fuck everybody that don't know me, that now know my face and shit. Please, if you see me in the street, leave me the fuck alone. And if you're gonna talk to me, say how you doing first. But yeah, like it, it was a mix like with my dad too, cause like I was a poor kid. Well, not a really poor kid, cause my mom had money. She used to work at like bars and shit every day and made mad money. Plus she used to do the nails, like I say, the ceramics, shit like this. It's kind of hard to. It's kind of weird, cause I just realized that. But like, and then she used to just never give me money i used to ask it for like a dollar for school or some shit she used to pull out the wildest shit like what the fuck do you think that i i put money on my pussy da, da, da. and i'm just like oh, all right fuck you and then i used to steal her money and shit but whatever with that you know she never like really trying to like swag me out have me looking nice or anything and when my dad got into my life um I couldn't see him or anything because he moved over here to get better treatment because he got like shot like 12 times. Wow. So, excuse me, but he used to like send me clothes like Tommy Hill figure pants and the Jordans when they was not retro, when they like came up in the 90s and shit. So now I was like wearing all this shit and like the people from the drug dealer and outside, they're like, yo, what the fuck you got? this like... It's just, like, you look nice, you know, like, what yeah. the fuck? Like, I was always on my sandals and shit. So now that I'm older, I guess, like, all that shit, like, mixed up together. And, like, you know, now I like clothes and I like making art. And it goes hand in hand, you know. You need some dope artwork for some gear to make it look dope most of the time. Unless you, like, all Kanye time. West. <laughs> so, speaking of Kanye, you make that sound. Is that someone you don't <laughs> rock with? Um... Kanye, Kanye, Kanye. Um, it is, you know, it's like, it's like he say, you know, and this is very true. And I'm, and I'm one of those person that he's talking, that that he's talking about when he say that. And that cipher, he says, the love you can never win, cause they love you, then they hate you, then they love you again. Mm -hmm. You know, I experimented that all the time and shit. And like when he said that, I was in like, yo, like real shit, blah, 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 blah. You know, like I'm feeling it. Like, but then you got this dude wearing a Make America Great hat. You know, I've like, you know, I'm an honor kid. I don't bow. I don't give a fuck about none of this shit. I live my life and you feel me? And like, none of that shit bother me. The government never affect me. It does piss me off the shit that I see them doing to all the people and shit like that. Cause like, it's like watch, um, George Washington say the government could build you, but it could like destroy you. You know right. what I'm saying? But like back to the Kanye shit, it's just like to see this dude like do shit like that and like being on Donald Trump's dick pretty much. You feel me? It's like, it pissed me off. It made me not want to fuck with him. I haven't listened to all his shit like that. I listened to the Cuddy shit because Cuddy is that dude. And, like, I love Cuddy because, like, I feel like he got me through my 18, 19, 20 years old. You feel me? But, like, you know, it pissed me off to see shit like that because it's like, I know my story. I know where my grandfather's grandfather came from, you know? So, it's a black man right here, right? Mm -hmm. So, he have a mom. And then he had, she have a mom too, and she have another mom, which was probably a slave, which was probably whooped by these motherfuckers. You feel me? Which, which was going, and maybe it was not a slave, but those times was not easy. Like I think about it, and I get goosebumps, and I'm like glad that I'm not in those times. They was killing black people everywhere. Like he's saying, shit like slave was a fucking unchoice, my nigga. Not because you choose to be a slave, or like 
like being a celebrity and this and that doesn't mean that slave is really a fuck. Slavery is really a choice. You feel me? It's not a choice when they're whooping your ass up because you don't want to do some shit, right? And then it's like, if it was a choice, right? And then you break out of that shit and you're like, oh, I don't want to be a slave anymore. You feel me? I'm out of here. You start running. Guess what's happening? They're throwing these ducks at you. What this duck is fucking doing? They're murdering you. They're fucking hanging you and shit. My nigga, that's not a, sla- a, a fucking choice. You feel me? That's some dumb ass shit to say. And it's fucking hard to like sit here and like be a Kanye West fan like I used to be after he says some shit like that. My grandfather is black. My my grandmother is black. You feel me? They Puerto Ricans, yeah. But like it w- before they came to this country and like sabotage this shit, they was already doing that shit in Puerto Rico. So I grew up learning about this shit. You know what I'm saying? And it just fucking sucked to have people like that. And like for an example, I fucking went to um LA like not even a month ago and I was in the fucking bus and this black dude pulled up with a make America <laughs> gray hat again and then just like I just felt like kicking this motherfucker in the face, you know what I'm saying? And my boy had to put it on his pad and now he's just like uh 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 and it's like yeah we're Kanye at right now to defend your ass bro. You know what I'm saying? Why would a black person wear one of those hats? Because they fucking love Kanye and shit like that. Because they want to be like Kanye and shit like that. That's fucking dumb. That goes to show you that the whole industry and all this shit is fuck shit. It's bullshit. They're just infiltrating your brain with all this fucking whack shit. And I feel like, you know, Kanye was just fucking sick, bro. He's the crack music, nigga. The real black music, you feel me? And all this shit. And he's like... Fucking, you know, sending the answers. Da 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 da. Josh Bruce got the answer. You know, when I heard them say fucking, you know, and all that shit is fire. Fitting better than a fucking, what was it, Sunday afternoon, some shit like that. Better than a chick to say yes too soon. Do you have a daughter? That's what you feel me? Like, that was fucking fire, Kanye and shit. And like, you feel me? But like, now, like, all this shit that he's doing, he's like, frustrating me. And like, I don't fuck with the clothes. The shoes are kind of dope, but the clothes is kind of weird. So, I don't know, I, just, I, I agree with a lot of what you said, and I'm glad to learn that you're from Puerto Rico because it's so much different over there, like, the way everything's structured, and, like, when I was there, like, people don't stop at stop signs, and, <laughs> like, the highway is, like, just a bumble of cars, and, like, it's just different there, like, people... Like, they're not being controlled like they are here. Like, there's there's a lot of structure here, and it's I more mean, structureless there. So, I feel like Puerto Ricans are, like, great warriors, you feel me? Like, we got our country stolen. It bombed us for 30 months, which is a year and a month, right? Until they was able to come in through... El Morro, which is the place that everybody come from United States and they go there and they take pictures and this yeah, like I went there. Big Dog Castle. In, exactly. In right? Old San Juan, right? Right, right. So yeah. like check this out. So you went there, but do you know that the United States bombed that shit for Not 30 months? You know what I'm saying? So they bombed that shit for 30 months. They fucking go in there, they fucking slave everybody because they basically was like the slavery that's going on today is the slavery that went down over there which is called modern day slavery, which is when you only get paid enough to like keep struggling. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's what they fucking did and shit. They fucked that whole shit up. And like now like American people go there and they love Puerto Rico and this and that. And like, yeah. And like, you know, a lot of people, a lot of Puerto Ricans are proud to be American, which Mexican people are American too because they're in South America. But um, I guess United States citizens and shit. That, and that's something that I am not proud of, you know? And, like, if you go in history, like, you go back to Chicago, 1968, 1969 and shit, and you, like, look up the John Lords and shit like that. I used to call myself Elvin de la John Lord, and, like, it was because the Puerto Rican history, especially in Chicago and Harlem, New York, because Puerto Ricans, you know, a lot of other Latin people, um are able to get um section a full stamps and shit like that like you know that was really like smacking the government and shit the fbi had to shut them down you feel me because they was like but it's fucking stupid as fuck i fucking hate this shit right so check this out they was fucking um cleaning the neighborhoods and shit because the government in new york was not doing it so they started cleaning cleaning the neighborhood putting fucking garbage bags and i mean back gar- bah. Bags full of garbage and like the fucking, you know, next to the other fucking garbage so the government could come take that shit up in the truck. But they wasn't fucking with it. They was leaving the bags there. And like, 
hospital Oregon at that time, I just was like, like, yo, like, what the fuck? Like, we helping y'all, keeping the neighborhood clean, and y'all don't want to help. And, like, then it happening and happening. So they're like, fuck these motherfuckers. We're going to line this shit up in the street. And so they line it all up in the street so now the bus couldn't pass by and shit. So they shut that shit down real quick. And then, like, so now the government was, like, trying to, like, come at them heavy, even harder than shit. So they, like, like all the shits up to fire at night and shit. And it's like, what's up, nigga? It's beef, you feel me? Like, it's it's on. Like, y'all gonna clean this shit. We gonna fuck shit up. And, like, a lot of shit like that was, like, going down. There was, like, church, churches that, like, was not being used. And they're coming in. And they're like, you're not using this shirt. This is all shirts now. You feel me? Like... We're going to help. We're going to put these shirts to use. So now you got Puerto Ricans and all the different type of Latin and even blacks, you feel me? Like, helping each other, cooking for the homeless and shit like that. Like, y'all could stay here now. We're about to get all these fucking bags and shit. And yes, they was, like, strapped up and this and that, you know, just like the Black Panthers. But you have to because... The government always been up to destroy us. Like, police pull up with a gun, a taser, batum, handcuff, you know? Like, when a police come to you, he come with a gun. With a fucking baton. With a teaser. Like, what the fuck you need all that shit for? You know what I'm saying? People in French, police in French don't got gums and shit like that. Like, what the fuck? Like, you know what I'm saying? So, like, Puerto Ricans really, like, did some wild work to, like, make this better for us today. You know what I'm saying? Which, they, of course, they're not going to teach you this shit in high school, but they're going to teach you about Christopher Columbus came here and, like, oh, wow. So, where did, where did you learn this stuff? Is this stuff you, you so looked up yourself? I got kicked out of school when I was 18, and I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, and they tell me that I'm too old to be in school, but, like, I, there was kids that was, like, 21 and 20 and shit. You know what I'm saying? It didn't make sense to me. I went to all the schools in Bridgeport, and for some reason, they was not taking me and shit. So they sent me to night school, and I was in night school, and there was mad old people in there and shit. Like, so I'm just like, oh, I don't want to be here with all these old motherfuckers. Like, I'm young. Like, well, I'm going to eat with this bull-ass bitch. Like, you feel me? Like, I'm out of here. This is not... This is not motivating. This is not motivating me to get my high school diploma or GED or anything. So I, like, dropped out of that shit, started the Unico, and um, I choose to go to the library every fucking morning to find out about how to start a brand, a fucking, uh, how to sue screen, how to do graphics. Like, you know, everything I fucking, all these questions I had, I just fucking went to the library and find out myself. But also, I was, I was... I always had something in the back of my head, like, to tell me I, I don't want to be a dumbass nigga, you know? So, like, I was just like, fuck, I'm about to look up some shit, you know? So I started looking up shit, like, Freemason shit and this and that. <laughs> and fucking, like, and that was kind of stupid to look up and shit. But then I also started, like, feeling more like, yo, let me look up more about, like, my rooks, you know? Like, like, what the fuck happened? Like, how did, you, like, United States took over Puerto Rico? Like, how did... We became uh, Americans. You feel me? Like so, I started looking at all this shit, and I keep finding out more and more. I also had a friend called Alistair. I don't know if that's his real name, but I think it is Alistair. And he was 19 years old. I was like 21, and he was just so smart to me. You know, he was really kind to me and shit. Put me on with a lot of shit in New York, and he was like, "Yo, look this shit out, look this shit out, da 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 da," and I'm just like, "Hell yeah, I'll check that shit out." And then every time it was just great knowledge, like great alignment and shit. And I just became addicted to like trying to find out more and more and more and more, you know. I also was a kid was just so against the government for no fucking reason. I I didn't have a reason. I didn't. I just it just didn't make sense how we had a governor like and he like dictate everything and shit. Right. And I'm just like, what? Fuck that. Fuck you. So, what was the the first piece you made for the Unico? Yo, the, f- <laughs> the first piece I make, um, it was a Lego U. This is a U made out of Lego, and I thought it was so fucking cool. <laughs> Shout out Dick and Ricky. Yeah. So, yeah. It was that. Then I started doing little drawings and shit. Da, 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 da. I was imitating someone, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And, I realized you, that it's just not the right thing to do, you know. So I found myself. I went out there. I found myself. It took me a long time. 
but I found myself, you know, like I became this wow, savage motherfucker and I liked that and but that's not who I really was, you know. This is who I am. I'm chilling, I'm ready to be 40 years old, sitting in a chair, making some art, and I give a fuck if it's sell or don't, you know, like, which is lit. And then um, as far as clothes, the first fucking piece that I made was in the internet. I found, cause I, I don't know, bro. I couldn't, I didn't know what to fucking search to find a silk screen spot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so I'm like, checking all this wild shit and i came across a website to make clothes i guess and uh, i made a t-shirt blue it say unico 1990 because it was just unico 1990 but then online i found that there was a fucking underwear company from colombia it was called unico and there was like mad like as payrolls and shit so i'm just like oh no i gotta add something to it so i like you know i sit down i started thinking deeper and shit and i just went with the Unico, because I am the Unico, you know? And it was late. I fucking made the shirt. It didn't came for like seven months. I gave up. I was like, fuck clothes. I just live life. So on my birthday, on my 20th birthday, I'm coming outside. I don't celebrate my birthdays, you know? Just like, just a fucking regular day, you know? Whatever. So I'm coming out and like this lady, UPS lady, pull up with a big box and she goes like, Mr. Roman. And I'm just like, yes. I don't know what the fuck was in that box, but I was like, somebody sent me something for my birthday and it's big and heavy. So I open it, I see blue. I'm like, oh fuck, I'm flipping out. I hit up my boy Louie. Uh, I sent him a picture. He's like, no fucking way. Da, 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 da. And we like sold out like 60 shirts in one day for 25 bucks wow. each. And like, I was like, fuck my job. I'm quitting that shit real soon. And that was your first release? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow, that's crazy. It's just like my, not, not my spit, fucking Facebook promotion and shit. <laughs> Coming with a clothing brand, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so, I mean, to go back real quick. So, I'm Italian and. Italian Unico is like the one like that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what it means so, to you too so Unico and Pick Latin or like Spanish whatever people want to call it I call it Pick Latin fucking um it means two things unique mm -hmm. like he is unique you know or like it could also mean only one so the way that I use it is like only one so it's Spanglish if you know if you know uh, Spanish or Latin, pick Latin or in English, you're gonna be like, "Word, the only one that's yeah. fire." But if you like don't know both, you know, you're gonna be like, "What the Unico mean?" You know, it's just like it's just Spanglish. Yeah, because the first time I heard it, like I was telling you when I got here, Subi K, he said the Unico hoodie is one on one. So when I first heard it, shout out Subi. I thought fan. I thought he was saying Uniqlo. The, oh. the, the store I was like how the fuck he get that and then and then I was on his page and he tagged you in a in a picture I was like oh Unico okay so then that's how I got put on to y'all oh, I haven't found you guys ever since so that made a lot more sense after but so after your first release what goes on there like we're, we're not stopping it was like okay so there was this dude from New York um Diego Murillo, he like run with uh, 40 ounce, okay. Joel, yep. fucking hustler of the century. Like so much fucking pros to those people, you feel me? Like so much fucking pros. So basically, I was in some shit, like I was not trying to step out. I was not trying to be in the scene. I was not trying to go to New York. I was not trying to meet people. I was not trying to do none of that shit, right? I didn't want a Twitter account. I didn't want anything. I was just like... I actually was still speaking, um, learning English. Yeah. So, fucking, um, I hit up my boy, Louis. I'm like, so ah, I got this brand, this, this, and that. I want you to wear this shirt. I give you free shirts. You go to New York, you rap. Um, I stay here. Excuse me. He's like, nah, nah, nah. Like, I want to be more. I want to be, like, something more, like, than just, like, somebody wearing the shirts. I want to be in ball and shit. So I'm like, okay, we could talk about it, but for now, let's do it like this. So he's with it, you feel me? Whatever. He's wearing the shirts now. He's in New York. He's rapping. He's talking about it on Twitter and this and that. Everybody in New York trying to meet the Unico guy. And, like, the Unico guy is over here, 19 years old, can't even get into, like, these events or anything. Finally, become 21. 
oh through the during that time I, I did went to New York and shit. I met up with Diego and shit. Oh, actually, so I, I was in a, a Kid Cudi fucking babe release. And fucking, I'm gonna lie, and this dude passed by with some Powell necklace, which were fucking amazing back those then. Those crazy. kind of cool. Yeah. Now, if somebody rocked those, whoever's rocking those, guys. <laughs> fly as fuck. But I see these dudes, so fucking fly, Versace fucking glasses, like big this, like... Oh, man, and that, and I'm just like, hey, dude, like, where do you get those? Da, da, da. He was like, real so spoken and nice. Hey, I got an SBP gallery, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? And he's like, oh, you don't know about the SBP gallery? Chicago. Yeah, you got a pen, da, da, da. He, like, write it down for me. So I go home, I shake it out. I'm like, oh, I know this shit. So, but I also was like, damn, this dude, like, just cut everybody in the line. Like, he just pulled up. People was there. I was there for, like, like nights in the morning or Early, I don't fucking know. I was there early, and this dude just like, hey, what's up? <laughs> Coming in, living with the shirts, like, damn, what a show off, it's fire. So you know, so I asked him about the pile necklace and shit, and um, he put me on. But I also was thinking, if I could get people like this to wear my brands, unlit, you feel me? I don't have to do shit. They just like out there rapping, and people's just like, oh, what the fuck? That shit is fire. Due to the fact that like the outfit was so fire, you know what I'm saying? Like the all the pieces. That's how I was thinking. You know, I was thinking like expanding and this and that, and I just keep making shirts and doing all kinds of shit, like trying to be big and shit. So I finally went to New York with Louis, and I met that dude, and he just helped me so fucking much. He's like, you know, I'm like, we talking on the phone to like six in the morning. He's like advising me so fucking good and shit. He's like, don't do that. Do this. Work with these colors and blah blah blah. And he's like teaching me about like older supreme shit like anything like all this stuff you know and everything that i asked he knew about as far as clothes and shit and also as far as like how to get big and shit like that and it was like fire he was helping me and but it got to the point that i'm just like oh, i don't want to do this anymore i just want to be me i just want to chill i don't want to meet people if somebody fucking my shit they fucking my shit let's keep this on the ground da 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 you know so it was like a side of me wanted it to be a dead and another side didn't. I know that was a big side of me that just wanted it to make the clothes and that's it. So I just keep like, you know, taking his advice and like getting better at it. I was hungry for the knowledge. So I just keep like doing different shit. I started fucking around with Photoshop and shit like that. And like since then I just never stopped. And I just keep getting better and better and better. So at what point does... Like used, like do you experiment with like textures of fabrics and different colors, like getting touching with pastels, so, and stuff like that. I experiment with everything. I think, you know, which, and I also wanted to do so many things throughout the years, but I was just too busy getting fucked up, you know. And I was kind of more fun, more fun than like right. making clothes, I guess. But it was, I liked the both, but I liked it getting fucked up, you know? <laughs> so, um, I guess that's why I never did every fucking fire shit that I could do. And I'm glad because now I'm just like, God level. Like, you feel me? Like, this shit that I'm coming with is just like incredible. It has never been done. I know what has been done, what haven't been done. My old ideas that I have that I, was, I thought that was so fire, all the people did it. And I looked at it and it's like, it wasn't really that fire, you know? So, like, now, like, I'm, I know, like, all this shit, so it's about to be crazy. But, yes, I did experiment with basically everything. Vinyl, which I don't fuck with vinyl like that. That's why I don't do too much. Only the bus logos, because the guy that does my bus logo is just so amazing with it. You feel me? So, but, like, yeah, I experimented with everything. All colored inks, fucking printing this shit. Well, I, my boy did this, but you feel me? It's like... We got like a cult and like we all create this and we all help each other out. We let each other know what's good, what's bad. So it's like, it's lit, it's lit. Um, so as far as your inspiration, where's that coming from these days? This day, my inspiration comes from reality. Nah, some motherfucker in the internet acting in like, you know, this way or like 
putting this like life stuff out there so you could think this is what it is when that's not what it is or anything i've been through all uh, all, all of it you feel me i was in the streets in bridgeport i was in the streets in new york like not in the streets in new york like dealing drugs or anything but like you know the underground man yes like i see how everyone moves like i know every all of that shit you feel me like I study so much shit, like, sometimes I see brands drop a new collection and I know exactly where they got that image from and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? So that's my mentality right now. All the motherfuckers that stun on me, all the motherfuckers that threw shade at me and shit, you feel me? All these motherfuckers that copy my shit and I run in with my sweat, you feel me? And this like that, fuck all y'all niggas. I'll kill all y'all niggas, you feel me? I'ma fucking murder all y'all niggas. I'ma terrorize this whole fucking shit. By the time I'm done with this shit, like, people just, this shit gonna be in the news. Like, I'ma terrorize, I'ma terrorize everything. I'ma put it out there. And also, the guy that... The guy, um, you know that lady that Charles Mason called kill and she was pregnant and shit? Her husband was the reason why, like, he's sending there because he was a fucking scumbag piece of shit, pedophile, disgusting dude. I would love to kill somebody that does shit like that, you feel me? So it's like, that dude, nobody knew he was a fucking pedophile. So, like, Charles Mason fucking kill the other families and shit, and they writing shit on the wall, like, um, death to pigs and shit like that and like you know everybody thought he was just like bugging and crazy but he was just even not crazy he was a smart ass motherfucker with like some dark thoughts and shit like that and dark way of living and like you know now that dude dies you know his family died his wife his baby and her belly like whoever I was there and like now that he dies you feel me they find out that he was like doing like all this disgusting shit to kids and shit like that you know and videos and photos it's fucking disgusting fucking hate people like that you feel me and like it, to put two and two together death to pigs you feel me like there was a lot of reasons why he did that shit i like read so much about it and stuff like that i'm pretty much just upset with all that shit you know what i'm saying but i do like the fact that like you know he was an artist and shit and like they fucking they like stomped on his ass you feel me and then he just like came back for the wildest revenge ever so that's me right now you feel me everybody fucking copy my shit i did events and like people that i'm not gonna say no name but y'all know who the fuck y'all are and y'all gonna look at this and feel so fucking stupid because y'all are fucking did the same type of events later fucking copy the same type of graphic people told me not to do something then they did it again and shit and i just like chill about it right but i'm about to murder shit you feel me like ah when i'm done it's just like gonna be nothing about the unicorn which means the only one so how do you feel when that happens because to me i love when i talk to someone about something and then they do it instead and they run off with it because it's easy to steal one idea but th those ideas that i had they came from with 20 more so i got 20 more you only took one so i i, li I like that question because this is the thing right you could steal an idea from me. I could talk about something and you could like be like, bet, I'm about to do this first. No. You're going to do something similar to what I say, right? You don't know what's in my head. That was just a crump of the idea. Mm -hmm. And you hungry ass, which is most likely for money, stole that little crump, trying to sell it. And you sold it and you made a little bit of money. Bro, that's just a little fucking crump. You don't know what's on my head. That's just something that fall off my head. And I just bleh, spit it out, you feel me? But the cake is bigger than that. You know what I'm saying? The cake is way bigger. Way fucking bigger. So, when people steal my ideas and shit like that, of course I fucking get pissed and shit. But I try to tell myself, I try to calm myself down and like, you know, be the smart person that I am, you know? Not saying that I'm the smartest motherfucker because all I know is the little bit I know. But I just trying to be a little smarter than that and just relax and shit and like just watch people and like see people crash with my swag. <laughs> you feel me? And then I'm like, bet, now I know what not to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's just chill, you feel me? I've been waiting a lot of years, you know, and I've been, like, spending a lot of years just looking at people that copy from me and what they do with my swag and shit like that. Like, I don't know where everybody fucking hate on the army now. I don't know where everybody want to be against the government. I don't know where everybody want to have, like, a wild-ass brand. It's just, like, savage and shit. But that wasn't happening in 2000 fucking, 
you know what I'm saying, to other anything. The closest to that was FDP, and they are killing it right now. You feel me? Right. So it's just like, I just like seeing all this fucking shit happening and let them, like, play around with, you know, my swag and the way I do things and shit. Because, like, you can't run too far with somebody else shit, you know? Like, can somebody rap like Eminem or Biggie or Tupac? Or even 50 Cent. Can somebody make a song like Kanye? Can somebody do JC shit? No, they could imitate it, but they're not going to go far with it. Later on, they're going to have to switch it up. Right. Jump, hop, and another shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they themselves could do this shit. Look at Eminem, he's still killing it. Not that I love it or anything, but, you know, he, he is killing he's it. Doing you know, he's doing his thing. Yeah. Just like he did it back then, you know? So, yeah, young guy is like, you know, it's different eras, but you know what I'm saying now? Like, you are the only one that could like wear your style. Nobody could wear your skin like you do. You know what I'm saying? That's a great quote. So, we talked about your inspiration. Now, how about? So, how, how about how about drugs? Do you dabble in drugs, psychedelics, anything well, like that? <laughs> Does that take you to? If um, you do, I don't want to somewhere? depend on drugs to like be fired. Right. You know. A lot of people do that. Yeah. Um, I don't drugs, mm -hmm. you know. I did acid a couple of times. I like it. I'm a dark person, so <laughs> I don't want, oh, it's crazy. First time I did acid, like, I just grabbed a scissor, and I was just like, I just want to stab somebody and just see the blood running. And my boy was just like, oh my God. can you just not do that? And I'm like, oh, shit, what the fuck am I thinking? Holy shit. Yo, take this scissors away from me. Da -da -da -da. I'm gonna kill somebody. So I'm like bugging out my head, like thinking all this murder shit and whatever. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm being dangerous right now. Chill the fuck out. So I like lay down in the bed. I put some headphones on and I'm like, trying to listen to some music and just relax and switch up my own body. And it worked. It worked out. But I didn't want to be bothered. So then like I did it again and again and again and it was all fire. But it was also. It was actually not all fire. Like, I realized a lot of things through acid. Like, who's fake, who's not, who's here next to me for the ride. So, like, Nas say, like, you know, some, um, how you a man waiting for the next man to get rich? Your plan is to stick up your hand real quick. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I realized who's in the ride for that and shit. We're not saying that I'm going to get rich. Maybe they think that, but I'm not looking forward to get rich. I'm rich as fuck. I'm mad happy, yo. You feel me? Like, so... Like, I don't know, like, that drug was kind of chill, it was kind of dope, it made me realize a lot of shit, but I learned a lot about myself, and the, and I learned a lot about a side of myself that I'm afraid of, so I, like, don't like doing it, you know? Then, lately, I started doing mushrooms, and I, like, fucking got fuck on my head, bro, like, I fucking disappeared, and I end up in this place where I thought it was hell, but, in fact, it was not hell, you know, and I'm just like, oh, hell no, man, I'm there, I'm there, like, really, like, this is it, fuck that, I'm getting out of here, you f I really thought I was dead, you feel me, so I'm tripping, bugging out, I'm like, no, fuck that, I'm getting out of here, I'm going back to the fucking world, I'm about to smash that shit, and then after that, I'm gonna die, but not now, so I, like, started, like, uh, moving and just, like, trying to move and shit, but it was weird, because I didn't see my body, I only saw, like, weird flash and, like, and and shit. So I'm like, finally got out of that shit. And my boy's like, yo, you good? You want to go to the hospital? I'm like, man, fuck the hospital. You bring me to the hospital like this motherfucker gonna put me in a mental place or something. <laughs> like, so you feel me? So I fucking got up the trip. Then I realized that I was just in my head and I was not in hell. I have this belief that when the soul doesn't exist, nobody got a soul. That's fucking bullshit. You can't sell your soul. If you sell your soul, it's like taking my body out of the clothes so the clothes will drop. So if you take the soul out of me, like my body will just drop because I don't have a soul. I'm fucking dead. So we don't have a fucking soul. We got conscious. You know, and when you die, like whatever, you know, if you die guilty or shit, you know, you're going to live, you're going to like be in hell forever. Whatever you think hell is, whatever guiltiness you got, that's just going to haunt you. If you die, like, you know, free, you forget yourself with things that you don't and shit, even when other people don't forget you and shit. You die in peace, you feel me? And you go, you're in a nice place and you're conscious and shit. You're stuck in that beautiful place forever. You feel me? So then I realized all that shit that I was stuck in my brain. I got out and I'm like, oh shit, you remember that fucking thing that I would say about how like the conscious is the soul and da da da? Tell my boy, he's like, yeah, what? And I was like, dude, I was not in hell. I was in my head. I need to share my life. You feel me? Right? And then like, so at the same time, 
it was such a bugged out fucking experience and i was so isolated or like <laughs> creeped out and shit so what i did when i went to the internet thanks the human for the internet um so i go and i look up all this shit about bad trips and this and that and then i learned that nobody ever had a bad trip it's just an experience that you're not comfortable with so you just like just start bugging out you know you're not you got to get the fuck out of there you feel me if you i'm homophobic and a guy and a gay guy touched you you're gonna be like you feel me oh, fucking touch me i fucking fucked you up you know so like you know, this is some mental shit. I'm in a place I've never been. I'm fucking uncomfortable. So I find out about it. And like, it was, I guess it was a good thing and whatever. So I was like, I need to do this one more time. I need to do shrooms one more time. I need to go back to that place. And I need to body that place. I need to be comfortable on that place. I need to break that place down. I need to go back inside my head and fix myself up. I need to put myself together. So the last day I was on um California last time that I went for this boot shit ass uh, straight show <laughs> fucking um and doing some poppers and shit i worked so fucking hard and the last day i finally was free so i went do some motions and i went to the beach i fucking meditated and shit and i just went back there you feel me and i'm just in that place and i'm like fuck that like don't be scared like fuck being scared that's what pussies and i just like figured it all out and then i just open my eyes and i was like bet you know and i also realized a lot of things about life and shit and like you know i'm 28 i'm about to be 30 like i'm not about to be broke 30 nigga anything you know i'm not out here trying to have so much fun or anything you know i'm a grown-ass man now i'm not trying to be one of these cool kids in the internet spend more years or like not more but like because but like i'm not trying to spend like the years of my life trying to impress people in the internet you know so then i could make some money out of that what they call it now cloud and mm -hmm. shit like that you know i don't need that shit i have a beautiful girlfriend such a good girl to me you feel me i got beautiful fucking low fucking cousins are crazy as hell I like fucking around with them playing wrestling you know i really like all this shit so and then i was like bad no more fucking motions for me you feel me like and like we i smoke weed every here and there it's chill um cocaine i fucking started selling coke and I also started doing coke and it was like fucking crazy. I was a savage. I was doing mad coke and shit. And it was fire. Yeah. It was. It seemed like it was fire. It, I, I guess it was fire because I was able to like let it behind and shit. But you know, some people are, in, are not able to leave it behind. You know, some people like really get fucking fucked with drugs and shit. And they just like, ah, there's something great going on for their life. And then... <laughs> goes to shit you know what i'm saying and you know fortunately some most of people that goes through things like that they don't have enough money to back it up once they fucking out of it like bring the spirit she good now yeah. you know this is low she getting vegas bread like right? all of these bitches are good now but like if i would get to that point you feel me i would just be flat bro everybody would be like oh he's a kohen now like whatever you know what i'm saying like so i'm glad that i like got out of that shit i also got i was able to get some of my homies out of that shit too you feel me so i feel good about it i also feel good that i did it you feel me what i'm not looking to have kids but if I do, you know, I could tell my kid all this shit. Yeah, I fucking did cocaine. I did this, this and shit. I think I'll slap the shit out of you. Feel me? You could do something with me, but like, da da da. da you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to be a cool dad and shit. But like, I could like talk to my kids about all this wild experience and all this crazy shit that I did while in drugs. But besides that, no more drugs for me. You know, I don't want to fry my brain up. <laughs> so, with everything you've been through, everything you've experienced. If you had to give advice to people that, like, they see you, they see what you're doing, and that's something they they strive to be, like, being happy and making clothes and experiencing art and living that, what advice would you give them to start? Because I think that's a lot, that's the hardest part for a lot of people, just figuring out where to start. All right, so this is the thing, right? Um, It's weird because... Um, I think that this is not for everybody, you know? And sometimes, like, I, well, not sometimes, a lot of times. Kids hit me up, you know? And, like, they're like, hey, I started this brand. Like, tell me what you think. And before, I was like, 
more blown than now, you know. Before I was a savage. Now I want I care kind of I kind of care, you know. Yeah, I kind of care, you know. So it's like I don't want to offend kids and tell them that's just whack like I used to or like I don't fuck with it or anything, you know. Which I still do be like, "Oh, I don't fuck with it, but you know, if that's what you want to do, keep going." You know what I'm saying? I think that everybody most but not everybody but like, i guess most people is just so like into starting a brand and like being this cool kid and like getting interviewed and getting their shit posted and shit and blah 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 and there's a lot of whack shit out there but these people is just so fucked in their head like they don't you know nobody want to be a doctor anymore out here like, nobody want to get out the hood and fucking be a t-shirt or like fucking i don't know nobody want to fucking own a gal a garden and like you know like it's like you just have like these millions of kids that just want to do all this shit that want to fucking paint and be a fucking famous artist i want to make clothes and be a famous fucking clothing designer i want to be a rapper and be a famous rapper it's not like about like i want to make a son and be happy about it you know what i'm saying yeah. i want to make a shirt and look at it and be like damn i did that this fight you know like or like i feel good because i did that it's not about that i don't think that that's you know you say that about money or fame and like you know i cannot advise people like that you know i cannot advise people like that i, I live my own life you know i did make a lot of mistakes i wanted it to be famous then i realized i didn't want to be fucking famous because kids are coming up to me like yo but i'll be unico and i'm just like motherfucker my name is alvin vicente like don't call me unico that's the name of my brand and like you know i'm like contradicting myself all the time which i still do sometimes you know and like I can't give nobody any advice, you feel me? Like, I, I, I really can. I'm not I'm not a wise OG or anything. You know, I could just only do me. And if you want to do something, hey, go ahead. That, I guess that's the only advice that I could give somebody. If you want to do something, hey, go ahead. But don't be worried about, like, what all the fucking people got to say. It's like, you know, I don't like when people advise me. Like, do you live my life? Do you know what I live? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I just ate? What do you ate? Where do you sleep? What size your bed? Do you know what size my bed? We are not the same people, you know? Is your mom nice to you? Mine wasn't nice to me. Like, you know what I'm saying? I can't advise anybody, like, because I have my own life and people got their own life and everybody's life is different and maybe it was good for me, it's not good for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I guess. What would you say is, what's your proudest moment with your brand? <laughs> what, what are you most proud of? Mm. Is there a certain drop? Is there a certain event you did? I don't know. To be real honest with you, I don't really know. I've done so many things that I came from, you know, it just came from Puerto Rico. I didn't speak English before, you know. So I think I'm just, it is not about like that m any specific moment. But I'm really proud that I didn't turn up like all, oh, like most of my family members thought that I was going to turn up, you know? Hey, you're going to be dead, you're going to be like you die, you're going to be in jail, blah, blah, blah. like why are you doing this, like you don't need to have a gun, like why do you do this, like, you know? And it's just like, now I'm not doing that. I had cousins that got fucking cut doing like wild drug shit and shit. And everybody used to think that they was like the nice kids and like and blah, blah, blah. And I was just this fucking kid that was like a hood kid. My mom was a bitch and this and that. You know what I'm saying? So my proud, my, uh, what I'm proud the most is about coming. I guess not coming to the United States, but being able to leave all that shit behind and making the big step of like moving out of all that shit. And like the whole brand itself is just like, something just crazy to me you know i don't rob people i don't sell drugs i don't kill for money i don't do none of that i don't bag drugs i don't do anything that you know i i don't have to steal i don't have to do none of that shit anymore bro i'm like i here like thinking about shit putting it on clothes like actually making like words like that and shit then putting it on clothes and shit and like I'm proud of that, you know. Like, I give ASAP and his first show in Brooklyn, his first dollar show. Mm -hmm. Travis Scott pulled up. Travis Scott DJ was the DJ. 
Bodega Vans, Worst Fears, Flatbush Zombie performer for free of the strength, you know, that was fire. We broke the stage. That was a fire moment on the <laughs> Unico. I met Travis Scott. I never knew how he looked like, right? And like, I was like Yo, blasting. It's so I, funny. You I say was that. fucking blasting the music, right? I'm like, wow, wanting the fuck out. And like, my boy snapped. Michael snaps. He's a great fucking photographer. He's like, yo, what's up? You fuck with Travis Scott? And I'm like, yeah, man, I fucking love his shit. Da, 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 da. And then he's like, you want to meet him? And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to meet him. He's like, yo, he's right here. And I was like, wait, what? He's at my fucking show? Like, what the fuck? So I look and I'm like, oh, shit. Well, the funny part is that when the Travis Scott song came on, I started like jumping and going crazy. And there was this dude that looked at me. He was like, wow, started turning up even harder. You feel me? And like, that was Travis Scott. You yeah, feel me? So amazing. like when my boy, he's like, nah, fuck that. He's right here. And I look and I'm just like, in my head, I'm putting two and two together. I'm like, oh, so he wasn't trying to let me turn up to his song more than him, you know? Like, so it was kind of fire, you know? Um, What else is fire? I like, used to do these shows with like, you know, the brand presenting the shows and shit, like Red Street P and shit like that. And it was like good times, you know, a fucking... I fucking made collections that were fire, you know, I just went to fucking LA, I, I just went back and forward to the West and back, like, you know, in a short amount of periods, and people are showing so much love when I go to LA, it's fucking insane, you know what I'm saying, like, all that shit is fire, and I just, like, just love all of it equally, you know, like, it's no big deal when I die, I'm not gonna have that stuff anymore, so, they're staying here, you know, I, I cannot take one of those like moments with me like to you know, like I'm looking forward to better things. It's so like just close. What's next? What's next? I cannot tell you what's next, you know. I gotta go I cannot tell you what's next, not because I don't want to tell you, but if not because it's all it's a process, you know. And I will perfect every single aspect of designing a t shirt. Of like working on a t-shirt, you know, like I, I'm just like working harder than the average, you know, like entrepreneur that own a clothing brand and shit like that. I'm trying to use a higher percentage for my brain instead of just like, oh, we could do this, make some money. I'm, I don't care about the money, right? It's I'm just what's next? I guess it's just focusing and destroying every single piece every single piece i want to make a fucking pair on the way that you want to go outside on this shit you know what i'm saying like that's what's next just perfecting my crap keep leveling up and up and up because i like leveling up you feel me it's like the best feeling like uh i feel like my boys are like being uh, more fire than me and then i don't know where you just like what and your boys like yo what the fuck you just murdered my shit bro and i'm like yeah 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 yeah. let's keep going hard like, let's, let's do it let's let's, let's keep the raw ball you know like, let's keep it on like, whatever fuck it's fire. I love it. I so, want to know. Yo, it's more beer. So, I got nothing else. I mean, you got the platform. Is there anything you want to talk about? Um. All right. So, I guess here I go. Fuck everybody. Fuck them. If you get offended by me saying fuck everybody, fuck you twice. Then, fuck you em, feel fuck me? Em. And, like... All these brands and shit out there, fuck them too. Fuck them. If I haven't collabed with you, and if I never spoke to you, if I never give you props, fuck you. Fuck them. You, 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 nah, nah, fuck you. Fuck you em. feel me? All these fucking kids that like started fucking brands and shit, where like they like parents fame and shit like that, and connections and shit like that, and with daddy's money and shit like that, fuck them. Fuck them. Everybody that I like, started a brand because, not because they love doing this shit or anything, but if not because they knew that they had connects and people that like was gonna make this shit blow up and this and that, fuck them. Fuck them. Anybody that stole swag from me, not fuck them because they just stole swag from me because I'm the greatest and they like <laughs> acknowledge that, so that's why they stole the swag. So they, 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 they all right, and like. Y'all need to stop fucking with all that fuck shit that these celebrities be wearing it. Because, like, celebrities be dressing like shit. 
<laughs> and like all these fucking kids is like buying all this shit just because celebrities got them and they're like not being <laughs> themselves and they fucking with all that fuck shit and also very fucking important okay very fucking important if you, if you just don't buy my shit please do not buy my shit if you don't know about the unico if you don't know about the cult if you haven't been rolling with me since like I'm, I'm not worrying about spending so don't fuck with my shit unless it's genuinely don't fuck with my shit straight up don't expect to see the unicorn famous people or anything um fuck everybody fuck everybody fuck everybody don't fuck fucking em. bow next year cause they're not gonna help you fucking it's fuck everybody again. I like saying fuck everybody. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> fuck everybody. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. Fuck everybody. <laughs> All right, man. That's Unico, Four Five Radio. That's it. Shout man. out Four Five Radio. Um, thank you for pulling up and letting me say fuck everybody. <laughs> Welcome. We out.